evening. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we ask, Lord, that this time together, that the thoughts of my mind and the words of my mouth might be pleasing to you. Give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and hands to serve in your kingdom. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray for the redemption of the world. Let all God's people say, Amen. And so this new sermon series is all about life together. And one of the main supporting uh, resources that I've been leading into is this book called Life Together. It's a really small, thin book. I encourage you, look it up, get it online if you can, read through it with us, walk through it with us. It is by an author, theologian, pastor, revolutionary, Dietrich Bonhoeffer. And if you don't know that name, that's okay. That is totally fine. You're going to come to know a little bit more about him throughout uh, our time. But the whole point, in, in a nutshell, Bonhoeffer believes that the Christian faith is more than just communal worship. Communal worship is so very important, but the Christian faith is more than just 60 minutes on a Sunday. It's more than just a 20-minute sermon on a Sunday. It's more than just a Words of Hope devotional right after dinner. It's more than that. And we'll come to see that in his life and in his own discipleship of others. The Christian faith is more than just Sunday morning. He deeply loves the church, and we see this in the New Testament as well. Not in Bonhoeffer, but we see this in the Apostle Paul. We know that Paul deeply loves the church. And we know he is committed to the church beyond communal worship. We know this because most of the New Testament is written by Paul. Paul spent a majority of his life on a mission evangelizing and developing and nurturing and caring for the church. And so to help us both with life together and scripture, we're going to go to Paul's letter to the Corinthians. Specifically, the first letter to the Corinthians. Now, before you roll your eyes and have this big, deep sigh, you'd be great. First Corinthians, that's the wedding passage. That's the one all about speaking in tongues. Just cool your jets. <laughs> At the heart of First Corinthians is something very different. At the heart of Paul's letter to First Corinthians is encouragement and wisdom to a struggling and hurting church. It's a church with too many quarrels and not enough loving relationships. It's a church that has too many insecurities. It's a church that lacks vision and growth and discipleship. It's a church with struggles. What I'm trying to say is the letter to the Corinthians is a letter to the church of 2019. The letter to the Corinthians is a letter to the Reformed Church of America. The letter to the Corinthians is a letter to you and me of Rose Park. And so do what you need to do in order to hear a word of the Lord best. Hear now from 1 Corinthians. The Apostle Paul writes, And so, brothers and sisters, I could not speak to you as spiritual people, but instead as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk because you were not ready for solid food. Even now, you are not ready for solid food, for you are still people of the flesh. For as long as there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not people of the flesh and behaving with human inclination? And when one of you says, I belong to the Apostle Paul, but another one of you says, I belong to the Apostle Paulus, are you not of the flesh? And what then is Paul and what then is Apollos? 
For we are servants through whom you came to believe, just as the Lord assigned. I, Paul, planted, and Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. The one who plants and the one who waters is nothing without God who gives the growth. The one who plants and the one who waters has a common purpose, and they will be given wages according to their labor. For we are God's servants, working together. We are God's field, God's building. And according to the grace given to me, I, Paul, like a skilled master builder, laid the foundation. And now someone else is building upon it. And each builder must choose with care how they are to build upon it. For no one can lay any other foundation than the foundation that has already been laid. And friends, that foundation is Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There's a lot of imagery happening in this passage of Scripture. There's a lot of metaphor happening in this passage of Scripture. And at times, specifically in the New Testament, imagery and metaphor can be bothersome, and it can be confusing, and it it can even muddy up the waters. But I actually find the imagery and metaphor helpful in this passage. And so I'd like to tease some of those metaphors and that imagery out for you all. And by doing so, I hope you aren't even more confused if you already are. But instead, you have a greater sense of clarity in how we do life together. So in the imagery of building and planting and working together, we need to understand very quickly that you and I are meant to work. We are not meant to be idle. We are meant to work in the kingdom of God. Notice, the text doesn't tell us, for we are God's servants, lounging, having coffee, and complaining about the church after Sunday. The text doesn't say, for we are God's servants, living the good life while others do the work for the church. The text says, for we are God's servants, working together. You and I are are meant to do some work, which means if if we desire, at Rose Park, to be a Christ-centered community that makes disciples, that thrives in our community, then it's going to take some work. It's going to take some effort. It's going to take collaboration and teamwork. It's going to take listening. It's going to take good questions. It's going to take forgiveness and grace. It's going to take a whole lot of love. Because this is work. Yes, of course, there will be times where We're lounging in the shade and resting and we can lay back and put our feet up and have a glass of lemonade. But there will also be times of tremendous effort. There will be times where we work in the heat of the sun. There will be times where we work in the sorrow of the rain. There will be times where we work in the darkness of night. But it's going to take some work. But it's not isolated work. We don't do this by ourselves. We do it together. Because one part of work in building up the kingdom of God is establishing relationships. One part of doing life together is establishing relationships with one another. You and I need to get to know one another. We need to know the people of our community. For some of you, you're already scared because making friends or establishing relationships is scary for you. But this is the good work of doing life together. We need to establish some relationships. I'm not talking about making friends. 
That's different. It's easy to make a friend. You just say, hi, how are you? And they say, fine, thanks, and then you keep walking by each other. That's really easy. I'm talking about investing time in one another's lives. I'm talking about doing the hard work of getting to know one another and praying with one another in difficult times and celebrating with one another in joyous times over the long period. So I want to encourage you to join me in that work. Of course, I'm going to say hi to you, and I'm going to ask how you are, but I'm more interested in investing time and energy and resources in developing relationship with you. And so I want to encourage you to do the same. When a new person shows up in worship, when a new neighbor moves in, when a new coworker arrives, when the child comes back from college, of course, ask them how they are. But then follow up with them. Invest time with them. Remember their name and their loved one's name. Take them out for coffee. Get to know them. Pray with them in difficult times and celebrate with them in joyous times. It's going to take some work if we want to build up the kingdom of God here. And a part of that work is establishing relationships. But as I mentioned, that's not isolated work. The text tells us we are God's servants working together. We don't do this by ourselves. Just as Adam was given Eve, so too are we given each other. Fear, if you're a note taker, write this down. Fear causes isolation and foolishness. Fear causes isolation and foolishness. Think of any really bad, scary movie. Why does that one person always say, let's split up? And then I'll go down this dark, scary hallway, and you go down this dark, scary hallway. Why do they do that? Because of fear. Fear causes isolation and foolishness. When we do the work of establishing relationships with one another, we don't do it in isolation. We do it together, a part of the community. We establish relationships and we build upon the foundation because we're doing it together. And so to remind you of that, I'm going to ask for a little participation. To remind you to not be afraid, I want you to look at your neighbor to your right or to your left. And I want you to say, neighbor. Neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Do not be afraid. Look at your other neighbor. Say, neighbor.
Because whatever we build, I can promise you this, it will be built upon the foundation of Jesus. I mean, isn't that a comforting truth that in this passage, Paul tells us, no one can lay a foundation on any other foundation that's already been laid. I find great comfort in that. That as the pastor of this church, I don't need to reinvent the wheel. I don't have to lay a new foundation. The foundation has already been laid, and the foundation is Jesus. You as a follower of Jesus, you don't have to come up with new truth to tell your neighbor. The truth is already there. The truth is the foundation. The foundation is Jesus. We as a church don't have to come up with brands making new programs because the foundation is already there. The foundation is Jesus. When we build together, we build upon the foundation of Christ. And so I invite you, I invite you over this series and over the next several series. I invite you this day and over the next several days. I invite you this year and over the next several years to join us. Join us in doing life together. Join us in establishing relationships and investing time with one another. It will take work. But when we do so, when we do the work of building upon the already established, the already faithful foundation of Jesus, we will certainly be drawn closer to each other as we're drawn closer to God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, would you pray with me? God, as we gather as your people, we give thanks that you have fed us by the word written, the Bible, and the word made flesh in Jesus. We give you thanks, Lord, for this encouragement from Paul to work together, to pull in the same direction, to row on the same course, to swing our hammers on the same way, so that we might build upon the already faithful and established foundation of Jesus. Lord, I, I take this time and I lift up our community. I pray for those who are hurting or struggling. We pray for now free house. We pray, Lord, that you would be with her and Bud, that you would align anything that is crooked and you would heal anything that is hurting. We pray for those, Lord, who are battling addiction or depression or disease, those who are lost and desperately need to be found. We also celebrate, Lord, with those who are celebrating. We celebrate those who are anticipating little ones, who are anticipating marriage vows or baptismal vows. We celebrate those who are anticipating birthdays or anniversaries. Lord, we lift up our community to you, and we ask you to hear our prayers, but we also lift up our nation and our world to you. Lord, when there is such a distance between left and right, we pray that we would find center in you. When we hear of more shootings, and more hunger, and more homelessness, and more violence, we pray, Lord, that your spirit would descend again and bring us to a place of unity under you. And Lord, we pray for the church nationally and the church globally. We pray for missionaries near and far, that they have the courage to spread the gospel to one more village, one more town, and one more soul. And so, Lord, we take this brief time of silence and we lift up our prayers to you. Lord, hear our prayers.